Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and this video I present lag. Lots and lots of lag. Because it is the return of the monument launcher. The launcher that could launch the Saturn V to low Earth orbit. Except this time we're putting it to practical use, quote unquote. We are going to launch a Pluto mission. And this is a Pluto semi-colony ship. It's got 16 Kerbals on board, I think. Uh, well, we can't check uh, that count. We've got Jeb, Bill, Bob, um, Val. You can see the lag just me clicking uh, the Kerbal list. Maxtred is a mechanic. I'm using USI um, stuff, so USI has all these other roles. Uh, Milrick is a pilot. This is my first attempt at a Pluto direct mission. So we are not assembling anything in orbit. We're not meeting up with anything. Uh, we're just going to be trying to get to Pluto and make Pluto orbit. And so we have Phoebe here who's a scout. Uh, Alling as a farmer, I guess will be useful. Uh, Nabert is a pilot. Maoli is an engineer. These are our victims, basically. Uh, Calby is a scientist. Calbill, Calbill. Uh, Magbart is a quartermaster. Well, we've got a lot of supplies. Uh, Rod Bree's a miner. Mm, Katka is a geologist, very important. Uh, Gleeman is a technician, probably for the nuclear reactor. Sambas is another scientist. And that's it. Uh, so I hope that's the right number. I, I, can't really keep count of Kerbals sometimes, uh, but we are at the Voyager transfer window. So we're going to try and sling by Jupiter to get to Pluto. So it's 1977. Uh, this would be if NASA really got a budget. And uh, it stands, I think, 261 meters tall. In fact, it's so tall that even with hangar extender, I can't actually tweak the bottom of it when figuring out the top of it. The bottom of it always clicks, clips into the ground. So that's a little bit difficult, but here we are. Uh, you'll note that I don't have Katniss Cape Canaveral or anything like that in here because uh, it's already a little bit overloaded. So anyway, I'll be trying to control it manually because I wouldn't trust KOS to do it given the sheer lag. And yep, well, here we go. Hold on to your ears. Throttle up, SAS is on. And we have more than 100 engines going. Is it more than 100? Yeah, uh, 40. It's 105 engines. Uh, we've got RD 270s, that's 64 of those, and then 41 M1s. So, ignition. I'll wait until I see the resources getting consumed properly. No tell if the sound is going to be on time or anything. This, this is a huge delay. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. Oh, the, I see the flames. Okay, release. turn it down for you guys. I'll still scream over the engines. But yeah, obviously I'll cut out large chunks of the launch. This is gonna take a while. Uh, last time it took about half an hour or so. Um, I expect it's gonna take longer because the payload's more complicated. We'll get to talking about the payload in a sec. Well, not in a sec. In a while. Our thrust to weight ratio is what exactly? Uh, 1.14, so not great. Definitely not great. Okay, we are above 2.4 kilometers. 47 seconds in, in apparently. It's still going. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. 
I don't like the distance between us and the prograde marker right now, but it's holding without using too much of its authority, so that's good. One minute and 20 seconds only, so pretty good time to the speed of sound, really. We're going shallower than I normally would, but I'm not sure how best to manage it at this point. It's not like I've launched it a whole lot. Okay, two minutes in, 23 kilometers in altitude, Mach 2.6 or so. Oh, I am still carrying shielding on it, even though I don't have Kerbalism installed. I had Kerbalism installed, so I do have some radiation shielding on. But I wonder how well it works without Kerbalism installed and what it thinks the mass of that shielding is. Hmm. I hope it's not throwing anything off. But I was dissatisfied with the way Kerbalism was handling radiation when we got further and further away from the sun, so... I decided not to go with it. Although, uh, they should have enough um, space, enough room on the craft uh, to be satisfied even with Kerbalism. I think we'll be fine on that. I don't need that window. We've got so many resources that the place that I normally park Smart ASS is a little bit crowded, so I'll put it over here. Taking a look at our food, water, and oxygen. It says no vessels still. That's weird. Hmm. It gave a reading in the VAB, so I don't know why it says no vessels right now. We've got food. They're not apparently consuming the food, though. I think trying to switch between Kerbalism and... Kerbalism and TAC Life Support has messed things up. Well, I was sort of hoping they would consume some food, because that does make things lighter once you get to Pluto. Okay, booster set. Should be interesting. Will the game crash? <laughs> I mean... We are waiting. Oh. Things are happening. The Ray's Asterisk, as I decided to call it. I got a little blit bits flying off there. I think that's actually the decoupler that flies off. Well, that's fine. Okay, how much more time do we have? is 2 minutes and 20 seconds on this stage, and then we've got another 6 minute stage. We better just hold this pitch. I have no idea how the fairings are going to separate. Those are huge, huge fairings. Okay, we are past 108 kilometers now. 30 or so more seconds on the core stage with the 41 M1 engines. 4 minutes and 24 seconds in. That's not real time, where I think I underestimated how long this launch takes, incidentally. We can still sort of see our boosters there, amazingly enough. That's probably not a good thing in terms of lag. Alright, that's the end of that stage. Separation. And ignition. That's a heck of an echo. What's the dry mass of this stage? Oh, I can't see. Uh, I was wondering if the... Uh, probably the dry mass of that stage is heavier than a Saturn V, so... <laughs> okay... Fairing set. Oh god! It went up. It went forward. Oh no! Oh no! Everything got destroyed, except Jeb is still alive somehow. Oh, these in the BE, uh, BA-330. Um, we're gonna need to do something about the fairings. This is not the time to regain consciousness, to be honest. 
Um, yeah, the fairings aren't going to work out for us, I don't think. Because they're just too huge. Hmm. Okay, it looks like I didn't fully up the ejection power pr previously. And so I've done that for the fairings. We'll try and let them go when we have the separatrons going, but before we fire up the second stage. So in between that gap, we really need to get rid of them. I've reduced the density a little bit. They were 400 tons. They're now 248 ton fairings. I hope you don't mind me reducing the density of them in order to get that down to 248 tons, but uh, they're still pretty heavy fairings. I don't know if upping the ejection power will do good things or will just hasten our destru destruction, but we'll see. As you can see, attack light support doesn't seem to be working properly right now, but we did pack enough food, water, and oxygen for them to live out their presumably 120 year lifetimes if there are 16 of them. And uh, the water is only 21 years because we've got a water recycler, though we might want to pack a few of those. I don't know if one is good enough. Uh, actually, I know one is not good enough, but we'll work on that. It's not a, a huge additional mass. Uh, so if we take off the fairings, I'll show you the, the craft, the Pluto craft. But uh, we've got three M1 engines, and this is the transfer stage. I decided to just go with the balloon cryo tank. It... Uh, yeah, it's it's a blue cryo tank. So we've got all the M Li layers. It'll give us enough to get to Pluto. That's the goal. But it is a how big a tank again? Uh, well, basically a Saturn first stage kind of tank. So uh, 2,340 tons. And then we've got an ion engine stage here. And actually, they're not supposed to be clipped into this tank. Gosh darn it. Uh, the problem is. Everything is so tall that I can't move things around, but it looks like... Um, no, on this decoupler, it's because of the procedural decoupler. Okay. So yeah, ion engines, uh, that can work during time warp, and we've got a lot of delta V with them, but it takes 106 days. Reaction wheel, big reaction wheels. We've got a reactor, because of course at Pluto, solar panels aren't going to work. So we've got a full reactor with radiators there. Um, these are just xenon gas tanks. I used uh, EUS for that. No, not EUS. This is the ICPS or DCSS, whatever. Uh, for that, we've got a docking hub here. Uh, our water recycler is here. That's uh, yeah. We probably need a few of those. Uh, well, we've got another one here too. So we've got two of them. And then this whole thing is our supplies. That's a huge supply tank, uh, 213 tons. And we've got hydrazine for EVAs, lithium hydroxide, lots of that. As much as Kerbalism required for all of that. Oh, we've got an airlock here, a cupola there, an inflatable HAB uh, B330 from Bigelow, and more reaction wheels. So that's our thing. This is uh, MKS Tundra Kerbitat, 6 meters diameter. Uh, that's a 33.3 ton module. So some space and they'll if they clear out the food from here they'll have even more space but I would like to send a lander as well that's what the docking hub is for but for now I want to test this part and see if we can get this to Pluto but well we haven't been off to a great start it's possible that we should put the fairing above the transfer stage and just put the fairing on this part that might be better then we put an inner stage here instead you know what though, reconsidering this, I'd rather the transfer stage not have to carry uh, the fairing base along with the rest of this. So maybe not. Maybe we'll just have the launcher deal with the fairing. And yeah, that's probably for the best. So forget that. We'll just go with the way it was before and hopefully we can eject the humongous fairings. The transfer stage is the part that I least want burdened after all. Okay, here we go again. Obviously, every launch of this is a major time commitment on my part. Uh, so, let's hope that works this time. SAS on, eventually. Okay, now the boosters have sort of slid up a bit again. I don't know why they do... Well, it's because... I don't know. It's because the bottom of the booster is clipping into the ground, I think. And then, so they want to slide up. I don't fully understand, but... 
anyway uh, I guess distance doesn't really make it softer so ignition okay and launch okay we are past the speed of sound now and we are at nine kilometers one minute and 20 seconds into the launch and it's taken about 10 minutes <laughs> so not complaining or anything but at least the boosters haven't torched the core stage that's a relief okay booster set We are 18 minutes real time into the launch, two and a half minutes in game. Off they go. Don't hurt anything. Okay. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna kill rotation close to the end of this stage. Separate the fairings, then light, then separate the stage and separate the uh, ignite the separatrons, which are actually AJ-60s, I think, and then ignite the stage. Hopefully that'll work out. We really need to ditch those fairings as soon as possible, though. Okay, we're getting close to the end of the first stage here. <laughs> And, uh, let's see, 13 seconds, but you can see how it's counting down, like 0.1 second at a time. I'm gonna start turning it closer to the prograde vector so that when the fairings separate, they're not gonna have different momentum, hopefully. Okay, I've got to set kill rotation now while I still can. Okay, fairing set. Please don't hurt anything. That that one is a little bit messed up. Oh, for God's sake. The fairings. I think we have to put the fairings on top and have this stage lift them instead of having them try to be that big. I think, uh, well, yeah, let's not waste any time. <laughs> there goes half an hour, but uh, yeah, we will proceed with trying to make the smaller version of the fairings. That was the maximum amount of force that I can impart to those fairings, so. Yep, and I don't think we can carry them all the way to orbit. That's probably too much to ask the second stage for. So, yeah. Anyway, nice to see that this stage ignites, uh, 6,000 meters per second. I suppose one thing we could do is check how much the, the transfer is going to cost us, right? I don't know right now how much heading off to Jupiter is going to cost. Okay, here we go for the last bit of this burn. Of course, we are not making orbit the way I wanted to make orbit. And shut down. Uh, uh. Like, whenever the cursor is hovering over the mech jab thing, it doesn't pick up the throttle. But, alright, so, let's say mech jab, oh, we have to target Jupiter and everything. Of course, we will need a very particular flyby of Jupiter to get to Pluto, but that can be dealt with sort of along the way. So, set as target, reset that, ASAP, let's say. Looks like, yeah. Oh, that was a lot. Uh, it looks like we should wait a little bit longer, maybe. Uh, 6,895. Well, that's more or less what we had with this stage in the first place. Uh, that's probably a sharper angle than we need for Pluto. Um, but, yeah. Uh, of course, it's crashing into Jupiter right now. I won't do too much plotting here let's see though oh well there's a neptune encounter 
that probably suggests that we need to encounter Pluto somewhere over here, not because I mean, yeah. Do you want to go to Neptune instead? No, <laughs> uh, we're not changing plans like that. Okay, all right. So let's try and launch again with smaller fairings, but then yeah, maybe I'll have to make this stage bigger. I guess we could do that if we could put into this stage the amount we save from having smaller fairings that might make it up all right about messing with this rocket in the vab is a pain so that's gonna take a while i'll be back with you with the results all right well will the third time be the charm let's find out this is what it looks like now without the larger fairing around everything uh yeah maybe good maybe bad don't know throttle up sas is on and ignition and launch and we're going up <laughs> for a brief second there we were not going up but we are going up now okay we are over 10 kilometers over Mach 1 one minute approaching one minute and 30 seconds one minute and 28 okay fine we're gonna be at one minute 28 for a little while it's about a 10 to 1 ratio as far as real time to game time I'm not paying the closest attention to be honest I'll, I'll save my attentiveness for when things are more likely to go wrong I suppose all right we are past two minutes two minutes and five seconds Approaching Mach 3, 28 kilometers in altitude, 20 more seconds on the boosters. Okay, booster set. And there they go. Okay, we are 36 minutes into this segment of recording, 4 minutes and 50 seconds into the launch, and 3 seconds left in the core stage. This time we don't have to worry about the fairings. Alright, that's good. Separation. And ignition. These fairings are still heavy, mind you. They're like 50 tons, but... It's the fairing base that's the ultimate problem for the transfer stage, of course. Something else we need to test is whether the RCS on the transfer stage can actually sell the fuel down and maneuver it properly. They're not weak or anything, but it's huge, so could be tough. There are reaction wheels on the payload as well, so we've got that going for us. Well, not great. We definitely will need a bit of the next stage to finish orbit here. And separation. Well, that's interesting. Uh, okay. Well, fairing set. Okay, those don't blow up anything. Ignition. Alright, well, we're in business still. <laughs> Despite all that. We haven't even gotten to the part about figuring whether the payload does everything right. Probably before the next uh, video, I guess this is going to become a whole Pluto series, uh, but uh, I'll try and sneak in something to fix the attack life support situation or put back in Kerbalism, though I'll have to mess with the radiation situation a bit probably. So even after this burn to make orbit, we seem to have enough Delta V to push us to Jupiter at least. Whoop. Cameras change there. So let's see if we can manage that. It's only a seven minute burn time. Okay, that's good enough. All right, uh, RCS can be off for now. The question is whether we can turn to the node in good enough time. So let's see, maneuver planner. And this time we would really like to get a hit 
uh, as far as approaching Pluto, not Neptune. So that's going to take some finagling because Pluto is very, very small. No, nope, that's Saturn. We don't need that. It's Jupiter direct to Pluto. It's not uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or anything like that. It's uh, Jupiter to Pluto. So ASAP, uh, we can't hang out because we've got um, fuels that will boil off. Though we do have some insulation, of course, on the tanks. Don't know how long that would last. Are we experiencing boil off right now? A little bit. I guess that's not too bad, all things considered. Okay, we don't need that anymore. And now for a whole lot of tweaking. Well, we definitely don't want to crash into Jupiter, so let's just first of all make sure we're going the right way around Jupiter. Okay, so Pluto's going to be all the way back there when we're over here. So we need to not get as much of a boost from Plu uh, from Jupiter. I think my ears my ears are actually ringing after the launch of the Monument rocket. That's not great. <laughs> um, oh boy. But you can see how fast we're going like that. It's gonna be tough to make orbit around Pluto. The question is how tough? I don't know. Oh, there's an encounter. Okay, and wait, the Jupiter periapsis is fine. We're not crashing into Jupiter or anything. Arrival time... Oh, that's days. Gosh darn it. How many years is that? Um, calculator. It doesn't seem like that bad. It's like 12 years. 13, 13.3 years. So, pretty good. The question is, once we get there, how about making orbit and everything? It's right too mm, touchy right now for me to try and get any closer, so I'm gonna just see about slowing down here. Oh, that doesn't feel very good, does it? I've got ion engines on the payload, but I don't think they can do this much. I don't know what kind of gravity help Pluto can give us, but I'm just pulling on this thing and it's never ending. Hmm, how much is that already? 7,000. Well, actually we have more than that. Okay, that's orbit. 9,626. Well, gosh darn it. We have 8,476 with the ion. Now, maybe if we get closer, it'll be better. Of course, this is all contingent on us being able to do the Jupiter burn accurate to a hundredth of a meter per second, which that's not going to happen. And even then, it's a gap of 400,000 if we're trying to do this right now instead of a mid-course adjustment. Okay, tugging on this a whole lot. 9,540 it has. We need to kick somebody off. Or we could use ship manifest to reduce our load. There is that. We need somehow an extra 1,000 meters per second. Ooh, that's weird. Okay, well, let's make the transfer first, and then later on in subsequent episodes, we'll see what happens. I mean, just the ion engine burns themselves. That's not the instantaneous application of Delta V that MechJeb there is expecting, right? So even if we got our 9,500, that doesn't mean we can do that burn considering the ion engines take a hundred days. So, yep. All right, where did Smart ASS go? We are, of course, 3,000 tons in orbit right now. As advertised, the monument launcher can get 3,000 tons into orbit. I'm going to start selling the fuel down now and just sort of continue selling the fuel down until we begin the burn. I'm going to trust the burn time that states there since it is just a single stage. Okay, getting ready. And ignition. 
So that's three M1 engines. Beginning our burn for Jupiter. Okay, we have passed the node. We are on escape. We might be a little bit behind on time, but not by a whole lot. Maybe a few seconds. Okay, switching to kill rotation so that we don't wiggle. There's no throttling on these engines, so it's going to be rough shutting them down at the right time. It's not really Pluto that we want to focus on, but I'm too late to focus on Jupiter. And shut down. 3.4 meters per second off. Let's see. Since we've got the RCS field here, I'll try to use as much of it as possible. Hey, I've been patient so far, I might as well... No, I can't do it. <laughs> this is going to take forever though. But then again, it's an ion engine burn otherwise. I'm caught between RCS and an ion engine burn. Of course, I think I can time warp with the ion engines in this install. I put KSP Interstellar for that purpose. So, yeah. Okay, no, I take it back. It's gonna take, at this rate, about 20 minutes to get, get to down to that level. Maybe I'll do it in between videos. Uh, well, we have a Jupiter periapsis, so we can say that this mission is at least on its way to Jupiter with 16 Kerbals. Let me inflate that habitat. To be honest, it probably should have been inflated to begin with. I mean, it's not like it needed to be deflated in order to fit into the fairing. And also, the Kerbals are inside already. And we should get the radiators for the reactor out. Okay, so progress. We, we have started out. Let's get into daylight a bit. There we go. Still 580 tons. I'll keep this tank on for now since it's got RCS that we could use. Uh, possibly a little bit of Delta V, but that'll boil off eventually. We got a cupola there. Everything's looking good. But Attack Life Support still doesn't see this. So let me try and fix that for the next video. We'll see if I can do that. And we'll see whether this eventually at least gets over to Pluto. I don't know about whether it's going to be able to make orbit. If they start eating the food, maybe that'll help. Maybe that'll help things out. But then again, they, in theory, according to the VAB, they've got 100 years of food and it's only going to take 13 years to get there. So they're not going to eat that much food. Anyway, well, with that, with this remarkable accomplishment in a way, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.